Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Plenty of Goodness. I have been MIA for about two weeks. I had some phone issues, but I'm back up and running. Thank you guys for being so patient. And today we're going to do a new meal. Um, this is a whole new week for you guys. Uh, so thank you for being patient. So the first meal we're gonna do is gonna be curry tofu bok choy. So I already prepped the rice beforehand. You wanna do this the day before or the day of. Um, you can do vegetable broth or coconut milk. I did half coconut milk and half water. Um, and then we got your organic bok choy. We're gonna separate the leaves from the stems. And then we have your green onion, your extra firm tofu. It's already been pressed um, with wrapped in paper towels to access drain the water. And we're gonna do some vegetable broth, organic unsweetened coconut milk, um, and we're gonna make the curry sauce. So we're gonna do the tested, toasted sesame oil, some ginger, tamari sauce, and garam masala, and the curry free powder. All right guys, so the rice and the tofu is already done and prepped. You can do that to kind of speed up the cooking process. So we're gonna rinse and cut the veggies. So you're gonna do three cups of organic brown rice, rinse really well. And then you're gonna add three and one fourth cup water. You can do water, vegetable broth, or um, in this case, I did half coconut milk and half water because um, we're gonna save this for the rest of the recipe. Um, and then you're gonna stir it and then cook it for 40 minutes. So while you're preparing the rice, you're gonna wanna rinse the tofu and then wrap it in paper towels if you don't have a tofu presser. And then we're going to um, let it sit for 10 minutes or so. The longer the better. And then set something heavy on top so it can drain most of the water. And that's for the tofu. Okay, so you're gonna rinse the veggies. And then what I did was I just chopped the tofu in cube pieces. And then you're going to separate the bok choy leaves and I already cut the green onion. The green onion set aside for later. And then um, the bok choy leaves separate from the stems. This is the stems. We're gonna cook the stems first. And then we're going to put together the curry sauce. So you're gonna get a mixing bowl and toss the tofu with the toasted sesame oil. Um, just put one teaspoon and mix it well and then set aside. And then we're gonna make the sauce. So you're going to do um, one and one fourth cup vegetable broth, half a cup of the unsweetened coconut milk, and one tablespoon of the masala, one tablespoon of the ginger, one tablespoon of the curry, and one tablespoon of the tamari. And you're gonna whisk it really well and then smell the nice aroma flavors. And then now we're going to saute the veggies. First, you're gonna add two tablespoons of the vegetable broth, put it on medium to high heat, and then you're gonna add the scallions or the green onions, and then you're gonna add one tablespoon of tamari and one tablespoon of ginger, and um, cook it for about a minute until um, it starts softening, and then until you smell the fragrant aroma, and then we're gonna add the uh, bok choy stems. Add the bok choy stems, cook this for a couple minutes. And then we're going to add the tofu. It's already been tossed in sesame oil. If you want to throw in the top tofu. And we're going to cook for about um, a minute or so. And then we're going to toss in the bok choy leaves. Then we're going to um, turn the heat down medium to low, and then we're going to add the, add the coconut curry sauce, and then we're going to reduce the heat to low, and cook for another few minutes. Cook for about 10 minutes up until the vegetables are cooked, softened, and the vegetable is kind of thickened. So 
just to give you a little preview, you guys, this is what it's going to look like. Your curry tofu bok choy. Yum. Look at all those delicious spices and aromas. And I already prepped the rice in the mason jars. Okay, and I'm just waiting for the mixture to cool down and then we're going to transfer them to the jars. Okay, so there you have your curry tofu bok choy. Look how delicious that looks, you guys. One meal down and two more to go. So if you want to, I use the baby bok choy and the baby bok choy is more tender than the big bok choy. Um, so if you want a more milder vegetable, I would just go with the baby bok choy and um, your protein from the brown rice and just once all the flavors mingle together the next day when you're ready to eat it, it's gonna be even that much more flavorful and fragrant. So there you have it you guys. Let me know what you think of the curry tofu bok choy. On to meal prep two. So meal prep two is going to be spicy tuna mac and cheese. So you can do this a couple different ways. You can, um, I'm using the organic chickpea. You can do, I'm using the spiral. Um, you can do elbow or um, the penne version, whichever pasta you like. And um, I'm gonna throw some nutritional yeast in there for um, the cheese. And then I just got this pre-made cashew queso. Um, it's made from the Siete brand. If you've never had their chips, they're delicious. I highly recommend them. Um, so we're gonna try this along with um, throwing a little bit of the uh, Follow Your Heart mozzarella shreds in there. And we're gonna do some organic broccoli, some baby bella mushrooms. And this is the, you'll find this um, tuna can by Loma Foods um, with, with the regular tuna in the grocery aisle, at least where I go to. Um, so we're gonna do spicy sriracha. They were out of the regular kind, which I normally don't go for spice, but we're gonna try it and see how it goes. Um, or you can do the lemon pepper. Lemon pepper is um, usually pretty good, but I decided to go with the spicy route to see how it tastes. And then we're gonna add some paprika, black pepper, and pink salt. So let's get started and start cooking the pasta and prepping the veggies. So you're gonna add one third cup water, bring it to a boil, add the broccoli. You're gonna cover and cook on medium high heat for about four to five minutes. Once it's close to done cooking, then you wanna add the mushrooms and then cook uncovered for another couple minutes on medium high heat. And then while the pasta is boiling, we're gonna cook for about nine to 11 minutes, reduce the heat to simmer. And then after the pasta is done, we're gonna drain and rinse in cold water. And then we're gonna transfer the pasta back to this pot. Okay, so you're gonna transfer the pasta back to the pot, and then you're gonna add the vegetables and um, spices, the paprika, pepper, and the salt. And um, just keep it on low to medium heat, and add the whole jar of the um, siete queso sauce. And then I add a nutritional yeast, the cheesier the better and then um, it's extra, extra protein as well, and B12 for our plant-based eaters, and then um, the mozzarella follow your heart shredded cheese. I use pretty much half the bag of the cheese and then just mix it really well until everything is, until the cheese is melted and until it warms up thoroughly. And then we're gonna cool it down and then transfer it to the jars. Oh my gosh, so there you have it, you guys, your spicy tuna mac and cheese. This is bomb, so good, yummy. Can't wait for you guys to try it. So it has your broccoli and mushroom. The mushrooms give it a nice spongy texture. And the chickpea is al dente, it's just right. You don't want to overcook the noodles. And you know what, actually the sriracha tuna is perfect it's not too spicy I think because of the shredded cheese I've added in there and also the nutritional yeast that will help die down the um, spicy flavors um, but it would probably just be good as the lemon lemon pepper or the regular so if you want to add more spice you could always add cayenne on top of it and then you can always add avocado as well I like my mac and cheese a little bit on the saltier side, but it's just the right amount of salt and pepper for me, and the paprika is kind of like my edit spice. 
Okay guys, let me know what you think of the tuna spicy mac and cheese. Delish. Okay, meal prep, prep three is gonna be a butternut squash and quinoa chili. So you can either do the organic tri-colored quinoa or the white quinoa. This is what I had in my cupboard, so I'm gonna go with the tri-colored quinoa. And we're going to do some vegetable broth, two yellow pepper, peppers, or you can get green and orange or mix and match the colors, one zucchini, one bunch of green onions, and one loose carrot. And then we're gonna do organic butternut squash frozen. I did the frozen just because it's a little bit easier. It's already peeled and ready to go. Um, I didn't want to buy a whole fresh squash and just uh, have a lot left over. Um, so this is why I went with the frozen. And we're gonna do one can of organic diced fire roasted tomatoes. And the spices is gonna be your pink salt, black pepper, ground cumin, and paprika. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cook the quinoa and to make this prep a little bit easier or faster, you can prep the quinoa beforehand. Um, we're gonna use two cups to two cups of water and it takes about 15 minutes. So um, you can do that beforehand or do it at the time of the prep. All right, let's get started. So you're gonna add one and one third cup quinoa and just put it in the pot and then you're gonna add two cups of filtered or alkaline water bring it to a boil and then once it boils let it simmer for about 15 minutes and then let it cool down and then we're gonna set this aside and start cutting the veggies. Okay so rinse and cut all the veggies. Um, so I cut the zucchini in inch slices and then in quarters and then um, I cut the bell pepper kind of dice them up leave them a little bit small to medium and then dice the carrots really fine and then we're going to start sauteing uh, the veggies with the vegetable broth. So you're gonna bring one third cup water to a boil or you can use the veggie broth, which in this case I use the broth. And then you're gonna cover and cook for three to five minutes. Sorry, five to eight minutes. And stirring occasionally so the squash doesn't stick on the bottom of the pan. And then after that, we're gonna add the scallions, the green onions, and the bell pepper. And cook for another five minutes. So after the squash is done cooking, then you're going to add a little bit more vegetable broth and you're going to add the green onion and the bell pepper and you're going to cook on medium heat covered for another five minutes. You're going to add the tomatoes, zucchini and carrots and the spices, the paprika, the cumin and the salt and pepper and then you're going to bring the mixture to a boil and then you're going to cover and reduce the heat and simmer for 15 minutes until the vegetables are soft. And then we're going to add in the quinoa and cook for another five minutes, let it cool down, and transfer it to the jars. Okay, last but not least, you're gonna add the quinoa to the rest of the pot, and then you're gonna cook for an additional five minutes on simmer, covered, and then we're gonna cool it down and transfer it to the jars. Okay, so there you have your butternut squash quinoa chili. And lots of antioxidants, lots of protein for the quinoa. Quinoa is a complete protein for plant-based eaters. So you can add more spice if you like. You can add more paprika or cayenne pepper or even Frank's Red Hot. Um, you can even add fresh herbs to this. Um, you can do parsley or cilantro. Uh, you could top it off with avocado. And you can also, actually you can uh, add some veganese in here if you want to do like like a sour cream type aioli um, or you can throw a little cheese on top whatever suits your fancy but yeah look how awesome that looks let me know in the comments below which one's your favorite recipe so you're rotating between three different meals for the entire week so that's 12 mason jars that's two jars a day lunch and dinner um, breakfast you usually have a power smoothie um, that's just my personal preference. You can do oatmeal. Oatmeal is a great um, breakfast goer or peanut butter toast and banana, avocado toast, whatever you can fester up. That's just my way of doing it since I'm pressed for time in the morning. Um, but yeah, the whole idea for you guys is to prep the for the entire week so that the um, so that you have ready to go meals and not only does it save you time and money from the grocery store, you also um, you have fresh, abundance ingredients, um, whole plant-based foods. And if not the day before grocery shopping, the day of, just because it's gonna be really fresh and you're gonna prep 
soon after that, the same day. So that's why it's stored in glass containers with an airtight seal lid. Um, and you can freeze up to, you can freeze it for however long, I guess there's no amount of time. Um, but in the fridge, it'll stay good for two weeks. Just made fresh, just like the day you made it. That is the key, key point, you guys, in meal prepping for the entire week. So we have your spicy tuna, mac and cheese, your curry tofu bok choy, and your butternut squash quinoa chili. So let me know what is your favorite recipe for this week. And keep on trekking, keep on prepping, you guys. Don't give up. A little bit goes a long way, even if you want to do half of the meals, you know, three days a week instead of six days. Um, start somewhere. Something is better than nothing. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video of meal preps vegan and gluten-free and don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to my video for future or to my channel for future videos just like these thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next week bye